Um, Henry Dar says, I stopped flying with my group because noobs kept rocking up at meets, begging for help to fix their wrecks. Am I wrong for telling others to learn something today? I mean, Henry, uh, everybody has the right to choose how they spend their time. And if you don't want to spend your time helping people fix their drones, then, uh, you know, I'm not going to criticize you for feeling that way. Right. Um... I, I have a lot of respect for the people who do like I've seen uh, I've seen Evan Turner, Evan Turner. You know, some people would say he's a big shot. Some people would say he's a pretty important guy with a lot of important things to do, like being the fastest drone racer uh, in the world one year or running his company 533 selling drone frames developing drone frames racing on drl flying a cinelifter at at the world series major league baseball game some people would say that evan turner's a big shot i would say he's a big shot and i was at a race it was a it was a global qualifier it was a gq here in knoxville and evan was racing so he was trying to set a time for the gq that would then allow him to go to the go to nationals and would help secure his placement in nationals. In other words, he wasn't just there screwing off. And a dude had a problem with his drone. I don't remember it, what it was. And Evan was like, oh, yeah, no, I'll help you. And he sat down and he helped the guy fix his drone. Right there in between heats. And even and I was like, even I was and I'm a guy and I'm, I'm like, oftentimes I'm the guy who will sit down and help you fix your drone. That's like kind of what I'm known for. It's certainly not for being an amazing pilot. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, and yet, if that, like, that guy was like, yeah, I'm having some problems with my quad. And I was like, yeah, hmm, well, maybe you could do this or that. Anyway, I got to go race my heat. I, you know, I was just like, my head's not in that space where I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start working on your drone with you. And then Evan did. And I was like, shit. It's a good guy. I, you know, I was a little bit chagrined that I had he did it and I didn't. So, like, I have a lot of respect for the people who take the time to help noobs get into the hobby. Um, but anybody who's like, that's not where I want to be. That's not what I'm going to do. I don't, like, feel like, you know, you deserve to be put down or anything. You're not doing anything. As long as you're not an asshole about it. Like when people show up and they're like, oh, my drone's fucked. You got to realize that showing up somewhere with a drone that's effed up and you don't know how to make it fly is just like a part of getting in the hobby. And so when you see these guys, it's not that they're this huge imposition and they're stupid. It's just that they're the next generation of people who are getting in the hobby and they have to get through this giant slog. And so, you know... When people show up and then everybody goes, screw, dude, why, just go research it on Facebook. God, just go watch a Bardwell video. Like, you can't be hostile about it. You know? I always, I, I, I say this as somebody who has a lot of experience trying to manage the boundary between how to take care of myself, my own mental health, and my own time versus... Uh, hundreds of people wanting my attention to help them fix their problems. Like y y y there comes a point where you just say, I'm not doing this right now. I'm going to do my thing. But you also can't say to the people who are asking you for help and be like, F you, I'm doing my thing and leave them with a bad taste in their mouth. So I think there's a right and a wrong way to go about it, but nobody, you know, if you don't want to do that, don't do that. FPV AM asks, before the BMI 270 became a thing, there was a period of time when a high percentage of MPU 6000 were noisy and non-flyable. Is that still a thing? MPU 6000? FPV AM. Right. I, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Plenty. Here's my theory. I think he's talking about... Remember when UAV Tech was looking at gyros and was like, oh, the roll on this Maytech is horrible, and the roll would be really loud and noisy on the MPUs? Mm -hmm. And then, like, oh, on another one, it would be the, the, the pitch. It was just because of board design? Mm -hmm. I think that's the attribution he's making. That, that's my personal guess. 
because yeah, the MPU 6000 has always been one of the best gyros. Yeah, it's a great gyro. I think the thing you're thinking of is poor board design that caused things like certain uh, different... Uh, I can't remember the exact flight controllers, but UAV Tech had a list of them and was doing testing. And you you would just uh, log them on any drone, and that FC would show as a higher roll. You could turn it 90 degrees, set the gyro differently, mm -hmm. and then it would be on pitch because it would literally follow the gyro. Um, I think that's what you remember. Kakute, I think, was one of them, one of the versions of Kakute. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's what I would think you're thinking of. So I would say now that that problem has moved. I, I don't think we see a lot of MPU 6000s if they do come out that are bad. I yeah. think, and most of the BMIs seem pretty good. I think the thing we're seeing now is some of the ICMs, some of the touchier ICMs need a cleaner rail than they're getting. Yeah. And I think a lot of times I would look at the boards before you order them to make sure people have good experiences on them. Yeah. The BMI is generally good. Um. The uh, Lux now. F7, that's one, yep. Yeah. So the gyro itself wasn't the problem, it was the board design. And now you don't see a lot of 6000s at all, do you? No, people are asking if MP6000 was running out because of COVID or something. It's just because they discontinued that gyro six years ago. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it, it has been marked as end of life for years. I mean, are they still making it? It's just too... I, my impression is they still make it. It's just too expensive. And that's I, why people have moved on. Yeah, the the ones that you... My understanding is a lot of the Chinese companies are sourcing MPUs from old boards and old systems. So they're just reusing old MPUs and reusing old uh, MCUs uh, to get you okay. parts out. That's but economical, that's, dude. That's re reduce, yeah. reuse, recycle. Doug McLeod, thank you for a $5 super chat. I would love to see a video explaining all the FPV companies, what they make and their history. Man, like the thing is, most of these companies, their history is that some Chinese guy started a new company. <laughs> and like, uh, I say that because like we see these companies come out of nowhere and like half the time, the guy who started the company or the group who started the company, they also own another group and they just decided they were going to make a new company. And I don't really understand the whole Chinese business culture. Um, it, it feels to me like there is less like like TBS. Somebody like Trappy starts a company, they build a reputation and they stick by it. And, and they want to, like, establish that name and stay with it. And they're not just making a random new company. But it feels like in Chinese business culture, there is more of a tendency to just be like, yeah, we start a new company. We don't really care. And maybe you didn't even stop your old company, right? You just decided it was a good idea to do that. Now, that's just my impression. I don't know if like, there's any truth to that. But, like, a history of companies like Flywoo, like, I, 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 who knows? I don't know. The bottom line is that you look at the products that they make today and are they good products and do you want to own them? And so like, and, and that's an ongoing thing. 